Okay, we're here to work on 5D notes for the Math 4 course. And uh, today we're going to be looking at the sine and cosine graphs, but more specifically, uh, how to create regression models so that we can predict future outcomes and use them to solve real world problems. Now, we talked about this in class that um, there are a number of real world problems that you know, the data patterns are going to behave like a sine wave, that up and down and up and down and up and down. And it usually has to do with the seasons. Uh, you know, the, the way that the Earth tilts either toward or away from the sun by 23 degrees uh, means that we wind up with winters and summers. Uh, we wind up with more daylight and less daylight. And so there are things that happen in a cyclical pattern uh, that when we start plotting the data, it starts looking like a sine curve. And uh, you know, when we recognize that, we can try and find the best fit uh, sine curve for the data to be able to project, well, if this is happening with real data, uh, what's going to happen, you know, next year or something like that? You know, what projections can we make for next year? Uh, and so we're going to learn how to use Desmos uh, to get those kind of functions. Now, first of all, um, I want to talk about uh, the unit circle. Now, I, I have been promising for about a week now that I'm going to put a video uh, onto uh, Classroom that's going to, for those that did not get a, a proper lesson in the unit circle, uh, will explain to you what it's all about. Um, but just understand that the idea behind the unit circle is that, and let's see if I can turn on my pen first. The idea is, is that you have an angle that one side is always there at zero degrees. And then let's say that we take the 60 degree angle, all right? Um, you are always creating some sort of angle with the unit circle. And in this case, um, you know, it's going to stop there. And, and the one thing about the unit circle is, is that the radius is always one. Radius is always one. And so when you go to create a right triangle with any given point, on the unit circle, like at 60 degrees, uh, you're going to wind up with this kind of an ordered pair uh, for your, uh, you know, your point out here, and that basically x is out one half and y is up square root of three over two. And you're also going to play with sine and cosine with these uh, uh, generally, uh, especially when if you leave math four and move on to pre-calculus. Uh, you will definitely be playing with the unit circle. So I, I need to, you know, if that is a part of Math 3 that you missed, I, I'm, I'm going to try and create something uh, within the next day or so to uh, give you something that you can brush up on that and catch up with everybody else. Now, one of the ideas about the unit circle is, is that we can, you know, if you would imagine this point being able to move on the circle, uh, you know, if I, you know, moved it over to here, I would have from here all the way around to there a 210 degree circ uh, angle, rather, an angle. And uh, so the question is, what happens if I get like 420 degrees? Well, wait a minute now, 360 is one full lap around. If I go 420 minus 360, I get 60, which means I would land here again. So not only is this 60 degrees, it's also 420 degrees. Now, for that matter, that is assuming that you are moving in a clock, uh, counterclockwise direction. You may recall from transformations that you learned somewhere between Math 2 and Math 3 um, about things like you know, rotation and dilation and reflection and translation. And your rotations always were assumed to be counterclockwise unless they tell you otherwise. This is where it started. This is what got that started, was the idea that we are starting from the x-axis over here and we are moving up this direction. That's because your first 90 degrees is going to happen in the first quadrant. And there's a lot of problems in the real world that can be solved right in this quadrant right here. Now, 
Uh, imagine if you were, you know, if, if this was a Ferris wheel and, you know, the, the circle represents a car that is going around and around and around and around. And every time that you stopped, you know, and, and, and you know, the, this, this represents time this way and this represents height that way. And so, you know, you would start on the, on zero in the circle and you'd go up and then you go down to zero again. Then you go under and you'd go back to zero again. And you are literally doing this right here. Up, then back to the middle, then down, and then back to the middle, then up, and then back to the middle. Well, that's, that's, and, and so you're seeing this going around in a circular motion. This is part of what generated the first uh, sine wave as far as math is concerned, is watching what's happening with the unit circle. And so, you know, you can see that the different points on the circle, as you are going around the circle, uh, the different points line up with different stages of, uh, you know, one period of the sine wave. Now, let's move on to the real world. Um, this is a graph of, uh, you know, sunspot numbers. And this represents data that, uh, you know, from July of 1985, and each one represents a year, up to 12 years later. And you're noticing that it's uh, it's in this, uh, somewhat of the form of a sine wave. And, you know, part of the explanations is that, well, sunspots come from the sun, and believe it or not, the sun turns as well as the earth. And so between the earth turning and the sun turning, it's no wonder that this thing is going in this kind of a direction where we'll have lots of sunspots and then we'll have not many. Now it depends on which part of the sun we're facing uh, as we are spinning around it. Now we are continuing to move around the sun, which means that the sun is moving around, you know, we're, we're not seeing the same face all of the time because the sun is spinning at a different speed than we are. Um, but uh, that explains some of that. Now, you know, the question we asked in class was name some other things, uh, some other functions that, uh, you know, situations in real life. And questions came up, you know, and a lot of it has to do with the seasons and the earth turning and the sun turning and the way that the earth slants 23 degrees to one side, which creates things like summer and, and fall and winter. Um, and so everything from rainfall amounts to uh, the number of hours of daylight, you know, when, when you think about it, you know, this whole business of daylight savings time is because during the winter months, uh, the days get shorter. Uh, that's because of uh, our tilt away from the sun. Um, now, the funny thing is, is that if you go to Miami and measure the number of hours of daylight you have, and then you go to Juneau, Alaska, and you do the same thing, you know, over the course of a year, uh, you know, you're going to discover Miami. Uh, let me turn my pen back on. Miami may wiggle a little bit like that. But then you're going to find Juneau, Alaska going up and down and up and down because it is farther away from the equator. It means that uh, there is more change in the number of hours of daylight. And so uh, these are things that when we try to use existing data to project something in the future, uh, you know, these kind of things that relate to uh, you know, the orbit of the earth, the spin of the earth, uh, the seasons and such, we're going to wind up with data sets that are going to resemble a sine wave. All right. So example three is taking our first data set and, you know, time periods one through six, and then we're, we're looking at data, which is behaving in this fashion, which you can see from the dots that it vaguely resembles a, a sine wave. Now, by the time we plug this in the Desmos, uh, we discover that the dots are right on. This equation nails it. We can go over here to r squared and see r squared equals one and, and tell that, yeah, it, it does nail it. It's 
you know, that means that there is no difference between the dots and the best line of best fit. Now, when it comes to writing the thing, uh, we see A and B and C and D. And of course, you know, when we set it up in Desmos, we have to have the sub one, both the X and the Y, we have to have that little tilde there uh, so that, you know, we're, we're creating a, a hypothetical curve, a projected curve. Uh, and the equation would look something like this. And I'm just going to take the pattern from up here and fill in the blanks. 1.5708. And then we're going to say X minus negative 2. Well, minus negative 2 would be that. And then D is 3. We're going to go plus 3 on the end. Now, a few things that we can notice here is that, first of all, there is a line that is where X is 3. That's the plus three part. We can also notice that our amplitude is two notches. That's the two in front of the sign. Um, I will also note that the plus two here means that it actually got shifted two units to the left. That's negative two and that's positive two. As a matter of fact, if I look at the next period, I wind up here at six, which means that my period is four. Now, you know, how did I get from 1.507, uh, you know, 1.5708 to, to a period of four? Well, it goes something like this. Uh, let's change colors there. We know that period equals 2 pi over b. Our period is four. I'm going to multiply both sides by b. And then I'm going to divide by four. And so b is actually pi, pi over 2. Now, wait a minute. Pi is 3.14. What is half of 3.14? 1.57. This is actually pi over 2. Now, when Desmos gives it to you as 1.57, I'm okay with you writing it that way. But just understand that pi over 2 is a more precise answer. And if we did that, then we would have nothing rounded in this whole problem. All right. Now let's look at the data for Juneau, Alaska, average monthly precipitation in inches. And when we plug that into Desmos, we're going to get this as a result, where the green dots represent our data points. And the red curve represent our, our line of best fit. Uh, now, I'm looking at the R squared value. The R squared is 0.85, which is not bad. It's good. It's not, you know, R squared equals 1. That was a perfect fit. This is not a perfect fit. But then again, when we have guys like these two that are kind of outliers there, they're going to throw off the rest of this. The rest of them are pretty close to the curve. These two are the, uh, you know, and, and, and maybe this one uh, are out of the 12 months of the year. Those are the three that are most not like this curve. But for the most part, or the, the, the curve is okay. Um, so uh, now what we can do is we can take this information and we can write a legitimate equation with it. Uh, I'm going to round things to one decimal places. B is going to be 0.6, and then we're going to say X, and then minus negative 4, well, we'll say X plus 4, and then plus 5.1. And so that should give us the ability, let's say, for instance, that we wanted to look ahead to next year and project what is the expected rainfall for August. Well, so far we have done the first 12 months of this year. So August would be another eight months in the next year. Uh, so 12 and eight make 20. So I would want to go where the x-axis is 20 and I would want to trace this curve and find out, well, 
the eighth month is about right there. It's going to wind up being about six and a half, according to the line of best fit. You know, now last year or this past year, uh, it didn't quite reach six and a half. It landed, what was it, 5.73 is the actual data point. So it fell, yeah, it fell a little bit short of six and a half. Uh, but, you know, next year is a different year. It, it may be, it, it may come closer to it. Because we got to the next two months and they actually overshot. Um, you know, that would be what, in uh, September and October. Uh, that might have been rain. That might have been snow. It's hard to tell with Alaska. <laughs> uh, but in any case, uh, that is how you would handle that. And then when they they ask you for a projection, you just trace along that curve until you get to the the, the point um, where you know it's it's that time length, and you know it's going to be that that much y value. All right, I think that was it for the notes. Yeah. So we'll stop there. I'll be reminded that you're going to have a 5C worksheet and also a Unit 5 review uh, assigned at the same time.